It's your girl and boy CT. I'm Cindy Barnes. And I'm Travis Barnes. And we are the founders of the Overcomers Podcast. Sponsored by Journey 333. That is a place in mind, body, spirit that helps you with fitness, coaching, and nutrition to look better, live better, and feel better. We produce these episodes every week for your enjoyment to help people to overcome adversity and live their dreams. Yo, 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 it's your girl and boy CT. I'm Cindy Barnes. And I'm Travis Barnes. And we're the founders of the Overcomers Podcast. That's right. And this Overcomers Podcast is sponsored by Journey 333, a place for fitness, coaching, and nutri- nutrition where we help you to look better, live better, and feel better. And it's mind, body, spirit. Today, we're going to help you get your mind right because we got Tom Campanero on the call, the founder, creator of Total Gym. Total Gym has been in business for 47 years. They are in so many different countries. You may know it from some of those infomercials with uh, Chuck Norris. But I just can't wait for Tom to share his story and what he's working on today because he's got a couple new products coming out and uh, just super honored to have him on the show, this icon of fitness. Tom, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. My pleasure. I love doing these things. Ah, well. So, you know, we got to meet Tom in San Diego. That was fun, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Just uh, sure. you taking us back through the years and, and just, you know, how this whole thing has evolved. And I was so inspired by uh, some of the stories, you know, when you know, there was there were some struggles in the early days to get things going. And, you know, where was the money going to come from to write the checks? I was just inspired by everything that you were sharing and uh, the, the journey that you've been on. Uh, so, Tom, if we could, why don't we start back there? Why don't we start back with total gym in the early days and, and then, you know, bring it on through to what we're working on today and where we're at, you know, if we could. Sure. No problem. Uh, I can jump that anywhere you want. You know, the interesting thing is every time I'm, I'm standing in front of a group like that, you know, I look around, I go, man, alive. Most of these people weren't even born when we started our company, you know, and it's, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I, 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 I always think, uh, you know, geez, back in 1974, you know, we didn't have any cell phones, We didn't have any internet. In fact, there wasn't even a fax machine, if you can believe that, right? So, you know, you think, well, how in the world do you market something? How do you get the, how do you get a product? In particular, a product like Total Gym, where even the old schoolers that grew up, grew up with a weight stack going up and down. And that was fitness to them. That's what, that's what they looked at fitness is the weights going up and down and you change the weight plates and you change the resistance. And here we were with kind of a simple product with a, with a, with an inclined plane, like a rail that was looked like a hill and you sat on this thing and it had cables hanging off of it. it scared a lot of people, by the way, you know, they, what the heck do you, this is a torture machine, you know? And I said, wait a minute, wait, it was very simple. It's very simple. Being a, being an old bodybuilder, you know, we, we used to build equipment. We, we tried to work the body every which way we could with all different kinds of contraptions. And here was such a simple, simple tool where you just lie or sit on a board that glided up and down an incline. You change the incline like you would, you know, make a hill steeper or less steep. And as you did that, you change the amount of body weight that you used and therefore, and as you change the position, you grab the handles, you pushed on, on, a, on a squat stand, you literally could go through hundreds, no, no kidding, hundreds of exercises. And I thought, come on, you got to get this. Nope, don't get it. Where's the weights? And I thought, oh my gosh, how do we, how do we market this product? Well, you know, it was interesting. We fell into a, uh, we, we did a fair, a health fair. Uh, and, and all of a sudden we realized is that we could we could be the video by the way there was no video back then we could do the we could be the video we, we were the live demonstrators on the product and then being really good schleppers like we were we would grab that person and we would hand them the handles and they couldn't do anything right except listen lie down do this stretch back pull over you know work your tries up work your, your sit up work your chest and they would just light up because at the same time they were getting the message of how the product works, they were feeling something that was totally uniquely different in exercise in that they were getting a workout that was very much like a gymnast where they were getting the stretching, the flexion, the strength training. And as they went through that circuit training, as you know, circuit training being one of the best ways to train the body, they were getting some aerobic conditioning. So here we were in the early 70s doing, are you ready for this? over 
200 trade shows a year. And people say, how the heck did you do that? How could you do 200 trade shows a year? Well, I didn't do them all. We had seven guys, seven guys all over the country. You name it. We would do medical trade shows, physical therapy trade shows. We would do bank banker trade shows. One of the trades, I told you this at, at Todd's place was interesting. We fell into the dental trade shows. And people say, well, what the heck were you doing in a dental trade show? Well, first of all, we had sold the 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 president of the American Dental Association, a total gin. They have horrendous back problems. The number one divorce rate. This is all statistics we found out. These guys were dying to be able to just to be in shape and to feel good. And we ended up having that being one of our largest markets. Of course, we did the orthopedic surgeons. We did the physical therapists. And moving forward, one of our one of our real lead ins to being um, let's say a very well accepted product was that we had physical therapists that we had met through Gary Gray, you know, Gary Gray, right? So a paradigm shifter in the industry, probably the number one in my mind, paradigm shifter who had changed the way therapists looked at how you change, how you train the body. And his, his one concept was when the foot hits the ground, there's a chain reaction through the body. So if you're, if you're dealing with a hip or a back, you know, look at the gate, look at what's going on when that person walks or what they do. And what we found out was that therapists saw our product from a very simplified uh, physiology, meaning you could lie down on your back, you could have your feet on a squat stand. It was called closed chain exercise, where you close the chain and you could alter the resistance, right? Remember the incline. So by altering the resistance, they were able to train a, a, a person by unloading their body weight. They had the calibration because gravity controls the resistance of our product, right? You're always working against gravity, percentage of your body weight against gravity. So for example, if you're on level three on the total gym and you weigh 200 pounds and you're on level three on the total gym and you weigh hundred pounds, it's exactly the same percentage of the relative body weight, which means that the therapist could start the person at a low level. And as they move them up the incline, they would be loading their body more. So they knew exactly where they were in the rehab process. So over the next <laughs> many years, we, we were, now, were now up to over 15,000 physical therapy locations around the country. And I'll give you why that's so important today. And, and stop me from rambling. I'm going to, I'll just keep going until you stop me. You know, there is a few things that you're saying right now that I think are so relevant, even though they were back then, they're very relevant to today. Like, first of all, meeting with resistance, you know, everybody's saying, oh, what's this? You know, it's different than what we're doing, you know, like Jack LaLanne, I, I think of you and, and those terms too, you know, I mean, he was asking people to come work out when doctors were saying, oh, don't lift weights, it'll make you dumb, it'll make athletes. Yeah, there you go. You know, and so you had this product. And then what I really like about it is that, you know, we're marketing at a time, uh, many people have said that our marketing is kind of taking a step back, you know, because of just where we're at and after this pandemic, um, it's like some of the things used to be kind of inefficient, like email marketing are coming on stronger. And some of the things that used to work really well, like Facebook ads are not as strong as they used to be. These are some schools of thought. But what you did is you just said, how do I get this in front of people? And who are my customers? Anywhere from dentists, uh, physical therapists, orthopedic surgeons, and get into their conferences. Because I would, I would have never just pictured a total gym at a dental conference. Like that, that to me is just like, you know, <laughs> and 200 trade shows. You're like B.T. Barnum, you know, like let's just load up and fucking go. Because even if you had seven guys, that's still 30. That's 30 between each of you if you just divide it evenly, right? You know, 30 of you or 30 trade shows per person, you know. So I just think that there's a lot there um, that people can already start to learn from about overcoming. Like, how much is your dream worth to you? Are you willing to go to 200 trade shows? Do you know who you want to get this in front of? And can you let them experience what it is you have to offer? Because that was what you did. You got you said, when I put it in their hands, they lit up. You know, I, I think that that is really cool, too. Um, so when you met with the resistance, you got people to experience what you were doing. I think that that's really good. Um, 
you got in front of the right people, the people that maybe you learned along the way who your customers were, because, you know, you kind of discover this, this physical therapy customer, and then it turns into 15,000. I mean, there's some lessons there for people. Um, and as far as overcoming resistance and going from having an idea, having a product to getting it to where it is today, um, what do you think are some of the biggest lessons learned in, in that process? You know, the biggest thing. You know, the first, uh, the first lesson is uh, you, if you don't have the passion for what you're doing, you're not going to have the persistence to get through the amount of time that it takes to actually refine what you have and to take it to the next level. You know, it's like we were talking at Todd's. I mean, Todd is the uh, exemplification, if that's the right word, of passion, you know, and he loves what he's doing. You see that, you feel that. And of course, it carries you through because no matter what you're in, no matter what you're in, if you don't have passion for that, for your product or your business or whatever, when you run into an issue, you're not going to you're not going to survive because passion is what carries you through those those tough times, you know, and, and persistence, I think, you know. If, if somebody would have told me in 19, let's just say we started in 74, if they would have told me in 1978, you know what, Tom, this is going to be a, a 20 year hoe before people really get it. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I, I, I think I would have done what, what I did was, which was just stay passionately involved in the product, shown it to as many people as we could. And here's what happened. The, the, the reason the physical therapy field came into existence for us was because it was a paradigm shift. It was a paradigm shift away from isokinetic open chain to closed chain functional exercise. Did we know that? No, I didn't even know what closed chain was, but we were there. And we were persistent and we were passionate about our product. And then here comes the paradigm shift. Had we not been persistent or passionate, we, we would never have gotten there. Example, Chuck Norris, for example. Now, Chuck, everybody knows Chuck Norris, right? He's the one that uh, he's the one that when he does push ups, the earth moves. Remember <laughs> that guy? So uh, so Chuck, we met in 1978 before he was a movie star. And, you know, we were not like starstruck people. We always, we looked at people and if, if people were real and genuine, great, you'd develop a relationship. If they were, you know, egotistical or way out there, forget it, it's not worth it. Chuck was the nicest guy. We exposed the product to him. He fell in love with it. I mean, literally as a martial artist, fell in love with the total gym. So for 22 years, ready for this one, 22 years, every two years, we would send a total gym to some far away, God forsaken jungle where he was filming these MIA movies so he could work out on the product. We never did anything with Chuck until in 1996 when we decided to see if we could tell our story because we had so many people that, have, that had fallen in love with it that were professionals or, you know, whatever. And, and we hooked up with a great company, American Telecast in Philadelphia, by the way. Uh, to do the infomercial. And there's another story. You know, we did the infomercial. We launched it in 1996. And when it tested, it failed. It failed miserably. And they came to us and they said, man, it didn't even do, didn't even do 20% of what we wanted to do, you know. And, but they were smart. They had invested a lot of money and they changed the offer and all of that. And in 1997, it went off the Richter scale. And it's still running today. Not the same one. Obviously, they refilm it, but it's still running today. So it's it's the longest running infomercial ever. And I think that's I think that's like 27 years. So it's 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 interesting. Well, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Persistence and passion or passion leading to persistence. Right. You got to yeah. have that passion to build the persistence. And then uh, failure as a teacher, you know, failure is not the the final say it's more like you know what can we learn from this it only did 20 percent, but then uh, you know you adjust and then it goes off the richter scale the following year I, I think that's so amazing when we were in san diego at todd's mastermind and we were fortunate enough to meet you um you were talking about some of the early days of um I, I, we were talking about this because cindy's the cfo right you know cindy's always like how are you yeah 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 uh, you know, she'll say, how are you going to do that, Mr. Rockefeller? And you were saying in there about, right. uh, uh, go ahead, Cindy, you remember? No. Well, I, do, I know your, your wife is your CFO as well. Is that right? No, no. Uh, Joy is our marketing mastermind. 
Oh, I, I, I fulfilled CFO and president. <clears throat> so I, I remember you saying at the, at the mastermind meeting that, um, that you said, we're going to write that check and we're going to just go with it because I, it's something about, hey, God, said, will, God owns this company, right? right, you know, right. Yeah, how did it go? Yeah, yeah you're talking about the early so, days. We, so, um, We've always had a very, a very strong faith. And, if, you know, I think people of faith, <clears throat> if they look back over their life, they're shocked at how much intertwining in their life God has influence. So I've always believed that everything we're everything we have is we've been blessed with from God. So therefore, our business was really his business. It wasn't it wasn't our business. We were stewards of it. So with that in mind, you know, as you go through businesses, you you invariably will run into cash flow issues. And as I sure. told you before, I had a, we had a meeting one day with our employees and they, they, they said, Tom, we have a question. You know, we, we noticed that we get paid on Mondays and we, our, our, all of our friends get paid on Friday. I said, well, look at, look, here's the, here's the deal. We don't have any money on Friday. We do the trade shows on the weekend. Monday, we charge the charge card. So Monday you get paid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, many a time we would be, we'd be going along and I would, I would, you know, sit down and I'd write all our checks that we had to pay accounts payable. And I would give them to our, you know, our CFO. I say, you know, I need these checks written and I want you to mail them on these days, you know? And one time she just looked at me and she said, Tom, we, we, we don't have that much money in the account to cover these checks. And I said, well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You know our faith. You know God owns this company. And he has a much bigger checkbook than we have. So mail the checks and mail the checks. And, and I've never, I've never, ever, ever in fish, again, how many years? 47 years. <laughs> ever, had, ever had a check come back that didn't clear, except if I forgot to sign it. And then it would come back and I'd have to resend it out. But, but uh, you know, it's awesome. It's very reassuring, I think, if we just take that particular uh, position in life. We can relate to that. People, people ask us today, they say, well, how come we get paid on the 5th and the 20th? We've always been working with a company called ASF, and our remits come in on the 1st and the 15th. So we need a few days for it to hit the yeah. account. And sometimes we haven't needed that. Of course, as we've grown. But yeah, recently, with the pandemic, we oh, were glad yeah. that we were still doing, mm -hmm. you know, still had the 5th well, and the 20th. All these times. That's funny. For sure. Um, and so thinking about these kind of uh, situations and, you know, where we've gone to over the years, uh, you have the longest running infomercial, uh, a company that's been in existence for 47 years. By the way, how long are normal? Uh, how long do normally infomercials stay on? You know, I mean, uh, they, they give this you is the most frustrating thing. One of the most frustrating things I've ever had in my life is when I sat down in John Marsh's office. He was the uh, president of uh, American Telecast at the time. His dad had started the company and they were, they were the most successful infomercial company at the time. They started when, when the cable TV, you know, blew up with going from three channels to like 22 channels. So I was sitting there, you know, and they loved the product and they, you know, they, they did a focus group and they, they just, they just, you know, and we're sitting there and, and John was saying, you know, if you, Tom, if you're sitting here three years from now, you're going to be extremely successful. And I looked at us three years. I said, we've been at this 22 years now, John. I think this is more like a 10, 15 or a 20 year project. Well, he laughed. He thought, uh, he said, man, don't, you know, it's one to three years. And you, you can tell that yourself. You just look at people, look at an infomercial. And just think back, how many, how many infomercials do you see that were here three years ago? They're really not. And that was their marketing strategy, you know, and I thought, oh, that's a pretty limited strategy. You know, I said, what you're not getting, what you're not realizing, because, you know, we had all this exposure from all these different markets. You remember all the markets and we got one one major thing out of those markets was that when people got involved with our product. They loved it and they stuck with it. And I said, John, you don't get it. What's coming, what's coming is the way to train the body. And that is with, with gravity, with body weight, the whole bit. And of course you all know being in the industry, 
that the American College of Sports Medicine came out, I, I forget which year that was, in the, in the mid-80s or something, and said, circuit training is the best way to train the body. Well, Total Gym is the, is the ideal circuit training machine because, one, your body weight against gravity, you can change the body position in a matter of a fraction of a second, and you're on to the next exercise. So, fortunately, they listened to us when we put the – the infomercial together and what we talked about. And we brought a lot of tests. Of course, we brought Chuck Norris to the table or a lot of testimonials to the table. Like Jackie Joyner, Kersey was a user, her trainer, Larry Mayo from the, from the Yankees and, you know, just lots of different really high quality people. That's so it was an interesting ride. Yeah. That's our, let's do the before and after picture. So the before picture, you know, you, you're starting out with a product and, and you don't even really know how to get people to experience it and understand it because people are used to the weight selector that goes up and down. Yep. And, you know, there's times where you wonder how you're going to pay the bills. <clears throat> and just to, uh, I know we've touched on this a little bit, but just to kind of put the stats together, um, how big has Total Gym gotten to be? Like how many countries, uh, how many different, well, uh, you know. Well, it's, it's broken up into um... – kind of three divisions, but the overall company is Total Gym Global, which my wife and I run, and we own we own all the intellectual property, so all the patents and trademarks all over the world. We have a licensing agreement with American Telecast, and they have a company called Total Gym Fitness, so if you go Total Gym Direct, that's, that's the infomercial. That is, they have the rights to sell to all of the mass consumer. So they do the they do the QVC, they do the Costco, they do the Walmart, they do the, the infomercial. Then within global, we have a, a division called Total Gym Commercial, which totally, totally focuses on the rehab market, the commercial fitness market and the international distributors. I think there's 34 countries in that area to date. It, it's hard to say, but I don't know. We've sold I don't know how many. I know it's well over a billion dollars worth of product out there at the, at the retail level. Um, I, I don't want to, it's a private company, so I don't want to like tell you how big we are. It's really immaterial. We're, yeah. we're as big as it takes, I guess. <laughs> I, think, I think that's just something though already, you know, 34 countries and selling over a billion dollars in product. I mean, just think about the passion that whatever listeners are hearing today you know you take your passion and you stay persistent and you it goes from something that people don't even really know they don't get it into 34 countries and over a billion dollars in product sales i think that that is awesome that's an amazing story what do you think that uh, what do you think that people should take from that if they're an entrepreneur if there's somebody with a dream uh you know it seems like you know getting people to experience a product there's there's a passion the persistence what do you think that you have over 47 years that more entrepreneurs should just, you know, kind of buy into and, and, and apply your practices or apply your strategies or, or things like that? Well, I think number one, faith is the number one thing. I think number two are, the, I think a lot of times entrepreneurs get away from the simple steps. Like here's a simple step for you every day, every night before the next day starts, Write down your goals. What do you want to accomplish tomorrow? I used to put little stickers on my mirror. So then when I woke up in the morning, there it was, boom. Well, now, you know, now you don't need the stickers. You have your cell phone, you have your cell phone, <laughs> you know, you can put it in there. You can put the, you, you can put it right in your goal list. You look at that, that uh, calendar every day and there, and there it is. And I think the other thing that I learned really early on is you have to figure out what's the most important thing to do. If you don't do the number one most important thing, why are you doing the, the number two thing? It, it doesn't make sense, does it? So figure out what's the most important and get that done before you move on to number two. Um, so it's really focus. I think it's focus. I think it's passion. It's definitely faith. If you have faith, if you don't have faith, well, you know, you, you deal with it, I guess. But um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's some of the little simple things. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, Todd, we've talked about him. He has a practice. I try to get all my team involved in. And weekly, we kick off an email thread that says wins, losses, ahas, and goals. And, and I break down my goals into daily goals so that it, no matter what comes at me in a day, I can kind of stay on track and still try to get done what was the important thing. 
Ah, I think that's yeah. really good. Yeah. So, Go so let me ask you, the, sure. with the pandemic, how did that affect Total Gym? I'm sorry, so the what? what? I didn't hear that. The what? With the pandemic and everyone. Ah. Yeah, so, I mean, did that, like, I mean, slow things down or did, did you know, regular average Joe start buying some to have at their house? Because I know that fitness equipment was super hard to find. I mean, they were back ordered. Um, yeah. So how did that work for you guys? You mean the COVID bump? That's what right. they call it, the COVID bump. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we had we had so many really good initiatives going into last year prior to prior to COVID hitting. We had, you know, a new product line for retail. They had a new uh, new infomercial. We had uh, we were launching a new Elevate line into the health club market. So, well, obviously, the first thing that happened, it was almost like uh, 2008. If you remember 2008, things started to go down the hill and it just went fast, 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 fast. And you had to be very agile and you had to be willing to change. So last year, what happened was obviously the first thing that hit us was the, the fact that these uh, wonderful politicians that we have in the country shut the health club industry down. Do you remember that? Was that horrible? Yeah. It was it was horrible. It was unbelievable. When you think about it, think about something here. What's the number one thing? Number one, I think that that helps people to avoid um, sickness is immunity strengthen their immunity and the, and the number one thing is fitness health look at people here's the thing we we found they shut the clubs down right they started talking about the people that were getting covid that had uh what do you call it um uh, issues other issues number one issue ob obesity yeah. obesity high blood pressure diabetes all counter that can be countered by fitness and exercise so the first thing was is our our commercial division pretty much started to shut down worldwide. However, our totalgym.com business and the infomercial business started to explode mm -hmm. because all the, you know, there's 44 million people in the health clubs that all of a sudden who have, who have probably the number one thing in their life is their fitness needed to work out at home. So you're right. We had a big, big, big boom as a lot of companies did that, that, that had home fitness equipment. Fortunately, we had a good supply chain. We didn't have any real issues. I think the most we got out to was maybe a three week delivery time frame. So we were good. We were good. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't uh, get out. But again, that's strategy that you need to have no matter what you're doing, flexibility and agility. Yeah, you know, this is called the Overcomers Podcast, and so I think that that leads me to an important question. You know, I was I like to ask people, you know, how adversities have become their advantage, or you know, what they've learned from adversity. Um, and I would say that in that particular example, uh, adversity that you were facing also showed you that it was good to have diversity, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, yeah. you 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 had three different departments, and one may have gone down. So, I mean, you know, we could all learn from that to say, do we have different divisions that if this gets hit by some unforeseen circumstance that these other two might still thrive in that same circumstance? Um, any other adversity lessons that you would share? Like, you know, what have been your biggest lessons from, uh, you know, facing challenges or... Well, I think early on, one of our biggest lessons was, you know, yeah, we did 200 trade shows. Let's face it. Come on. That was ridiculous. <laughs> we, were, we were going to too many places too often. Yeah. We should have zeroed in. And we did. We zeroed in on the on the rehab market for a while before we went to the consumer consumer market. So the big lesson there was don't don't do too much. Try to try to sit down with somebody that knows how to help you strategize and focus. Focus is an important area. However, like you said, if it wasn't for the fact that we were entrenched in commercial and rehab and in consumer, when a when a pandemic like that hit, we wouldn't have had the ability. A lot of the companies that were, let's say, totally commercial focused, had a had a tough tough hoe, tough hoe. The other thing is, I think that um, you know, adversity is the only place where we grow. So when we when we get hit, and I'll give you an example. My son probably has the most diverse. A relationship with the product. So when he was four years old, five years old, he, he was in gymnastics. We used to train on the total gym. Can you imagine the strength that a little kid could develop using his body weight against gravity like a gymnast? 
And then he got into sports and of course he got injured and he'd rehab on total gym. And I'll never forget one time high school playing football. He's, he's playing football, catches the ball on a punt return, gets whacked and dislocates his elbow. Ugh, horrible, horrible injury. It's, I mean, you look at it and you want to puke. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, the French, but it's horrible injury. He's laying on the field there and he's, oh. I said, okay, Jesse, what do we do with this? What do we do with it? He said, he says, we grow from this. We grow from this. The point being, the point being, whenever you run into adversity or challenges, if you have an attitude by which you're going to grow from it, look at, look at the, look at the, the value that has, you know, versus not growing from it. So anyway, good. You you had instilled something great in his young mind, though, that he could say that. Uh, that's just amazing. Like, you know that you're getting hit with something really hard and you're already looking towards the growth. That is yeah, awesome. Exactly. That's good. So what are you most excited about today? What's going on now today with Total Gym and everything? Well, well we're, uh, you know, we've always been, um, at least I've always been, but most of us have always been purists from the standpoint of the inclined plane. So every product we come out with, uh, I'll just give you a little, here's a story for you. So you know the health club business. Whoa, I just lost you guys. We, the health club businesses, they have a hard time getting their arms around our product because in the health club, they have to have a single station machine that does one exercise. So a person can do chest, go over here, do butterflies, go over here, do presses, right? They can't get their arms around Total Gym. So we came out with it. We, we came out early on in, uh, when we launched into the health club market, which I, I stayed out of for years because they just didn't get it. So in, 19, in, in 2004, we, we jumped in with, a, with a, a campaign called Gravity, Gravity Training. And it was multiple total gyms led by a trainer. We trained them, music, the whole bit. It was beautiful. And, and we, we did pretty well. In fact, it, it's what helped us launch into 22 countries because people outside of the U.S., they got it. They understood this concept. I don't know why, but they did. But anyway, what happened was we, we then figured out that, okay, you want single station machines. So one of our marketing directors at the time said, you know what? Let's look at it this way. Let's look at the total gym as the loaf of bread. And let's look at all the exercises as slices. Uh, interesting. So let's pull off some of the most popular slices. So we did. We started an, a, a product line called the Elevate line. If you go to our website, you'll see it. There's a press machine. There's a pull-up machine. There's a core machine, which is a phenomenal core machine. There's a jump trainer. And we just launched about a year or two ago. And the only rowing machine that is an eccentric, concentric loaded rowing machine. No pressure on your lower back. Variety of exercises you can do. It's a phenomenal product. And everybody that gets on it just lights up and goes, wow, this is really cool. So um, that, that's our most recent product. And now we're coming out with what's going to be called a hover cycle, which uses the same concept where the, the, the seat is, is floating and you're pedaling. And what happens is it generates an eccentric, concentric pedaling motion. So all of these fit into a line um, called the Elevate line, which is just, it's phenomenal. You go from one exercise to the next, but it's, it's single station stuff, you know? So wow. it's, that's, <laughs> it's interesting. That's exciting. And, and where do we go to, where do we go to just kind of look at it? And Totalgym.com, totalgym.com. That's the commercial site. Totalgymdirect.com is where you'll see uh, Chuck and Christy and the consumer line. Okay. So yeah, totalgym.com. Seems like there's a lesson there too that uh, 47 years in business and you're still evolving, right? I mean, it's well, my hair, my hair, I haven't lost my hair, so I'm not evolving in, in, a, in a bad direction. <laughs> you know, everybody said, I always, all my people say, why, why are you growing your hair like this? I said, because most of my, most of my friends don't have any hair. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. No, you're doing better than me. I wish I had your hair. <laughs> And then, too, and then about this last year, COVID, the other COVID thing is a lot of us started growing facial hair. I've never grown facial hair. Right. And that's what that's when all of a sudden they go, hmm, look at all that gray hair. All that gray hair is growing out of your face. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all got to be like cavemen, you know. Uh, I know it. I know it. It's great. Uh, but, uh, 
you know, I mean, the, you know, as far as that goes, you know, kind of reinventing over the years and those kind of things. Um, any any lessons there that you'd like to share or any advice that you'd like to give as, as far as how a business needs to continue to reinvent or look towards the future or look at different trends? Um, anything on that that you'd share? Yeah, you know, I was involved in a, a group called Vistage. I don't know if you know Vistage. It's the uh, largest CEO peer group in the in the in the world, actually. And uh, it's something I wish I would have had when I was much younger. This guy, um, where you could go to a week, a monthly meeting with peers, you know, other CEOs. And I learned something very interesting, and that is that all businesses have the same issues. They all have employees. They all have marketing. All have finance doesn't make any difference if you're in the fitness business or the janitorial business. And I think, I think the thing I learned uh, at Vistage was being agile within your strategy. So if you, if you, if you spend the time to, to put together a strategic plan and, and look at that strategic plan every month or every week, however often you want to look at it, and then have all of your uh, traction plans. So you have all your items that are, are, are what generates traction in your business. And obviously they go from the marketing to product development, to strategy, to finance, to all the key, usually no more than like five or six key strategies within your traction plan. And I think you've, you've got to zero down on all of those and have accountability no matter who has responsibility for it. They've got to be accountable for carrying that out. But I think that one of the biggest things is my Vistage chair he came out with a concept called agility. And you don't hear much about that in business, but being agile, being agile in your, in your strategy so that if you, if you see something that's starting to show promise, you can jump on it. Or if you see something that says, well, you know what, you're wasting your time on this. This is, it's draining you. You get rid of it. So um, I think those are the, some of the biggest things. Oh, there it is. Business owners, leaders, uh, anyone listening. Be agile, be agile with your strategies, be flexible. Yeah, that's really good, really good. Well, any other uh, final words of wisdom that uh, you'd be willing final to Final words of, words of wisdom, oh my <laughs> goodness. Tom Campanero, words of wisdom. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought I gave you a whole bunch of them. <laughs> you already did, you already did. You've given us so much and we're so grateful for your generosity with your time and all the lessons over the years and just sharing everything that you've shared with us today, so. Um, you know, Tom, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. And good luck with your thing. And if you need anything, let me know. Awesome. Thank All you. right. Thank You're you. You're awesome. Have a great appreciate day. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Overcomers Podcast sponsored by Journey 333. When I am not hosting the Overcomers Podcast, I am working at one of our fitness franchises so that I can continue to help people overcome adversity on a daily basis. That's right, people come to the Journey 333 fitness franchises because they want a coach in their life. They want somebody to help them overcome the adversities of life, motivate them to higher levels of greatness, bring out their potential, help them lose weight, get off medications, fight depression, fight anxiety. That's what we do on a regular basis. If you feel like you want your life to be about helping more people to overcome their adversities, if you feel like you're an overcomer and you want to create more overcomers, then maybe owning a Journey 333 franchise would be for you. To find out more, go to www.journeyfitness333.com.